As a YouTuber, there are sometimes projects where your subscribers decide to plague you with requests for follow-ups, and that is this little diesel here. You guys have utterly emailed me, commented, brought it back up, everything to do with this little motor. So how about today we show you that it's running, and we discuss what it took to get it there. And before I even start, a big shout out to the community of people that follow me. I am a gasoline guy. I did not know diesel from a hole in the wall. And thanks to you, I was able to get it up and running, and I really appreciate that. Let's get started. So first of all, with this diesel, you've got a solenoid here that has to have power in order to be able to run. So that wasn't too bad. We just installed a little toggle switch here. We needed cranking amps in order to be able to go and deal with this. This system is set up to run with, I believe it's a 420 cranking amp lawn tractor battery. It sits right here normally. So when we were diagnosing, we needed cranking amps. That's where this old truck battery came from. It's overkill for what it should need when it's running correctly. This right here is your slam in order to shut it off. That is your run position, obviously, as shown by the little sticker. And let's see what we can do here. So when you push this decompression valve here, what you're actually doing is locking down the exhaust valve for a turn so that it comes up through with no compression whatsoever. And that allows it to be able to build up speed before it knocks this free and then slams it for its first actual fire. So do keep that in mind. There is no fire your first turn. It is totally the second turn. Another learning experience of dealing with diesels. So let me set you guys down. Here's our little ignition key. So the first thing that everybody informed me in the comments and stuff, or rather about five or six of you, was that this actually has adjustable valve latch, which I didn't realize. And so when you pop this off, remember how I said this goes to the exhaust valve? So when I pop this off, when you rotate that, that comes down like that and it hits on this. So that tells you which one is your exhaust. The 
This right here is a 10 millimeter. And your adjustment through the top is a flathead screwdriver, like so. And what I was informed, and they were correct, is that over time, the exhaust valve, the adjustment ends up walking, and it becomes too hard for it to actually turn over over time. And so once I adjusted this, I was able to go and get the unit to start and run, and it would run good, but once the unit warmed up, it would never start again. That moved me on to the next problem. So within a few seconds of seeing this, you should be able to tell what the next thing is that was wrong with this. Obviously, this is a brand spanking new starter. We talked about this in the original video, that this was turning over, but it really didn't seem to be turning over the way it really ought to be. And it seems I was quite right. Well, what happened is this would start once, this would warm up with the motor warming up, once this got stone cold again, it would be able to start it. But the moment it got warmed up at all, it would not turn over enough in order to start the machine. So I ended up discovering these were an oddball size. For those of you that are Canadian or European, these are 16 millimeter, apparently. Um, if you're in the United States and you use Imperial, that would be a 5.8, but the 16 is the actual size. In fact, all of this machine seems to go and be all metric. So that was a 16. As you can see, that's an oddball brand spanking new I had to order because I've been running into 16s on my Fords more and more often in other vehicles. So I special ordered one. Of one. And then the back one here is right there. And that's just your standard 13 millimeter, which is what a lot of these are. This is just a pull-off connector. You put positive 12 volts to this, it triggers the solenoid, it starts it. Well, if YouTube has taught me anything, it's that if you're going to do something stupid, make sure to do it on video. So here's my Triumph 4-post lift that's been outside now for a few months. And we're going to take this generator that I'm betting probably weighs about 500 or so. We're going to drop this down. We're going to chain it off to it. And we're going to see if we can lift it and then drop it down on the little dolly that I made. All right, gusty wind, safety third, take one. Okay, gusty wind, safety third, take two. Okay, lift is maxed out. I just passed my hand underneath a 500 pound object held by a 400 pound rated strap. That was smart.
There we go. That should work. Gotta strap it down onto the little trailer and then get it moved out of the way to work on it later this winter. So where do we go from here with this diesel? I'm not sure. But right now, as you can see, I've got a couple of other projects on my plate that I need to deal with. So we'll be getting into those here on Redneck Computer Geek soon. And there's going to be a lot more stuff coming over to RCG Racing pretty soon. So be watching for videos over there too. Have a good day and thank you for supporting me. See this? This is what I get for fixing the end of my ramps. That is my girlfriend's cat deciding to come over here and take a dump in my stuff. Look. There. Cat turds. Darn cat.